what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so we have a box of goodies here from golfcartstuff.com now we have some wheels and tires in this package here i got some 14 inch wheels and low profile tires now this company has a big selection of wheels probably a larger selection of tires say you want to run a low profile tire kind of like we did in this situation you had a couple of different brands and sizes to choose from now, if your golf cart's lifted and you want uh, taller tires, they, I want to say they start like 20 inch, maybe 22, 23. And I want to say they have a 25 inch tall tire as well for some models. So be sure to check out golfcartstuff.com for your wheels, tires, and other golf cart needs. So online, uh, some guys are saying the 14 inch wheels and low profile tires work on their front of the club car DS. But a lot of the guys say it does not work and it hits the fenders when you're turning the cart. I plan to get this golf cart painted and I don't want to ruin the paint job in the front end if the wheels and tires are touching. So I also ordered a one inch lift block for the front of the golf cart just in case. And I also ordered a wheelbase extension kit. Now, the wheelbase extension kit I'm going to do first and that should uh, pull the front tires and wheels away from the fender. So when you're turning, it should not hit. But if we need to add the one inch block, we'll do that. But that's just going to be like a, that's going to be like a Hail Mary. Um, we're only going to throw that ball if we have to. Now I also ordered for today's video, some heavy duty leaf springs for the rear of the golf cart. If you notice the back of the golf cart, it has a stock ish looking like an OEM looking rear seat, but it has a single leaf leaf spring on the back. And I noticed that when we were replacing the bushings in the back end. So I wanted to go ahead and put the HD leaf springs on the rear as well. Anyways, let's get this box open. Let's see exactly what we got. Let's just see what this is here. So check this out. They sent over a laser etched uh, front plate. It's got sticky on the back of it there. So we can replace the old badge on the front of our DS with when it says Fentertainment. I like that. The golf cart color is going to be silver. This is going to match the wheels. Everything's going to tie in. So a uh, big shout out to them. I like that. It turned out really good. Thank you guys. These are the seat covers. They sent over some swag, some golf cart stuff hats. And I like my Richardson hat. So I'll be wearing those. The tires I went with are 205 3014s. This is the wheel I went with. I think it's a clean design. I'm more of a simple type guy here. When I say simple, uh, I just like something clean. I like straight spokes, really. Um, I think this is just going to look good on the cart. I will say I'm kind of nervous now because these are a lot bigger than I was expecting. But I think we can make this happen. I can't wait to get them on. See what it's going to take to make this golf cart just look a little bit better. Need to make some room. Need to pull that beast out. All right, let's move that. I'm gonna pull this other golf cart out here, make some room in the garage so we can get started working. Can't wait to get started back on this one here. All right, this is the rear leaf springs. Let's open them up, check them out. Okay, looks exactly like rear leaf springs does. Nicely uh, shipped and foam package. We need to put the bushings in there. We'll go ahead and get these installed first and put the wheels on the back. Slides in there so much easier. Man, I pushed in there easy. That's the way to do in bushings, if you ask me. Now we're at 20 and it's between 20 and a quarter and 20 and three eighths. So it's like five sixteenths, 20 and five sixteenths from the lower portion of the fender well to the ground here. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the leaf springs. Once we get those replaced, I'll pick you guys back up. I'm telling you that for a reason. And we'll put these tires back on it. Then we'll see exactly what kind of uh, clearance uh, we have after we install the leaf springs. I'm sure it's going to raise up a little bit. We have three leaf springs here versus one single leaf spring uh, on the axle. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because my camera, which is my phone, um, is pretty much dead. All right, guys, the uh, leaf springs are on. Everything's hooked back up. 
I did opt for some new U-bolts. Uh, I had them on the shelf. I didn't order them, just something from leftover job, but new leaf springs are on. And uh, can't wait to let's go ahead and put the wheels and tires on and see exactly what kind of clearance we have now. I can't remember what the first setting was, but let's see what this one is. We're at 20 and 3 eighths from the lip down. I believe that's what we were kind of, I think we we're like 20 and a quarter, 25 sixteenths. I know it was only like a second ago for y'all, but it's been about 30 minutes for me. So, oh boys, what do you think? What do you think? Now, for granted, that wheel is dirty. I get that. I understand it's dirty, but the white, the white and the whiter the card, I, I'm sure that person thought it looked great or that's what they were going for, but man, I like this. It's clean. And uh, let's see something here. This is the tire pattern. This is the GCS Forerunner tire. This is Golf Cart Stuff's uh, house brand tire here. 12. There's a little bit of a difference. Right, just give you another comparison here from the side. The 12s, that's exactly what they look like there as far as how much. They're almost flush with the fender. They stick out just a little bit now. We go over here to this side. Looks like it may stick out maybe about a half inch more. This should be the extension kit to move the front wheels forward two inches on the club car. You got some hardware here. You got some new shock mounts. You have uh, instructions there. It's a Jake's product. I think it's a really nice piece of uh, aluminum here. And we're going to mount this up under the front of the golf cart like this right here. And it's going to push your leaf spring forward, I want to say, two inches. So I might go ahead and put the front wheels on here and show you what the wheels and tires look like. I was kind of wanting to save it to the end of the video. But I would rather help somebody out and show them a before and after about what this right here kit right here would look like versus, you know, just how to install it. So I think that's what we're going to do next. We're going to get these 12s off the front. Mount the 14s on the front to show you what the wheel clearance looks like. All right, so this is what the 12s look like. They don't hit, they they clear. And when I'm when I'm riding this thing, they don't hit either. They don't hit anywhere at all. I'm really worried about hitting around this right here area with the new wheels and tires. Now, See the tires up against the fender already. That doesn't even turn much. So so with 14 stock on my golf cart, it's definitely going to hit, and we definitely need to do something about that. I don't know if you can see, look at the fender. If you're riding on the road and it's going to hit the fender, that's not going to be good. So, And if you look at the tire. So I read through the owner's manual. Pretty much what the owner's manual is saying that I you know, comprehend is we're going to have to take the kingpin nut off of the top of the spindle. Once we do that, we're going to raise up the upper control arm. The upper control arm is going to have to flip 180. And we're going to go ahead and cut off the shock tab. Once we cut the shock tab off, we're going to, it's going to have new tabs on here that we're going to uh, drill a hole into the upper control arm to mount the, um, the shock back in its pretty much location here. But instead of the shock tab pointing this right here way, we're going to cut it off. If you didn't cut it off, it'd be pointing that way since we're going to flip the upper control arm uh, over 180. The next thing it talks about is disconnecting the uh, the, the hubs away from the spindles. It talks about disconnecting the tie rod linkages away from the spindles. What I might try to do is to leave all of those connected. Just remove this lower bolt right here for the leaf spring. We're going to drop the leaf spring down. Unbolt the main cradle from the frame. We're going to put this right here. It's going to go back in the same bolt hole locations. But what it's going to do is it's going to push this front leaf spring pad forward two inches.
Uh, next, I'm going to repeat the same process for the other side, but as you can see here, the upper control arm is uh, now out. All right, so as you can tell, what I've done here is I went ahead and took the upper control arm off of the golf cart here. I disconnected the lower bolt to the spindle and the hub. I left it hanging right there. In the, um, in the instructions, it pretty much talks about taking the spindle all the way off and taking the, uh, the nut off the very top off and switching that bracket over on top of the uh, control arm. I just found it better just to leave everything in place, leave it hanging across the back of the frame rail in the back back there. Next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a 9 16 socket and I'm gonna put on this right here bolt here. There's four bolts. Those need to come off. I'm gonna take a 9 16 wrench to hold the nuts right there. We're not gonna mess with the, the upper bracket. We're gonna leave it in place. But we're gonna drop this lower bracket off here we're going to reuse the toe plate, but this one bracket here we're not going to reuse. Okay, we got our four uh, nuts off. Once we get those off right there, this lower plate will come off. We're going to reuse this plate. Their four bolts are going to come off like so. We're going to reuse those. All right, so next thing we need to do is install the leaf spring to the aluminum bracket here. I got my metal toe plate here. On the bolt, we got the bolt, and it's got the uh, lock washer. It's gonna go from underneath. Once we get this right here in place, we're gonna put the nut on the very top. However, we have to get the leaf spring in place and sit in flush. So I've lost the audio footage in these next couple clips. I'm just going to do a voiceover. Basically, I'm removing the lower shock uh, mounts that they include with the kit. After you remove the bolts from the upper control arm, you're going to take these brackets. You're going to place them directly behind where the bolts went. You're going to drill a hole and mount them to the upper control arm. They include the bolts and nuts to mount the bracket to the control arm they also include the bolts and nuts to mount the lower portion of the shock directly to them i saved the painting step to last because i wanted to paint the hardware along with that one piece of the control arm that we cut off so the last step of the puzzle here is to replace the upper control arms as you can see you're going to have one upper control arm that's going to go one way one's going to go the opposite way that control arm I'm holding right there in my hands is going to be for the passenger side. I reach back and I grab the driver side. Remember, we're going to be installing it with the flat portion of the upper control arm towards the front of the golf cart. Repeat the same process for the other side, and we're done. All right, guys, the entire front suspension is put back together. Let's check out it from the side angle here. Yep, looks a lot better. You can actually tell as move forward some. And that's our whole goal for this right here. Just like that, both sides is now complete. Let's go ahead and get the wheels and tires on next and see what kind of clearance we have back here. From All right, guys, there it is. The wheels and tires are on. Plenty of clearance in the rear. Make our way to the front. Look at all the extra clearance there. So it turns out I lost the audio in this clip as well. Basically, I'm gonna place my fingers here on the fender and turn the wheel back and forth to see if 
the wheels are touching the fender or my fingers and it isn't so we've gained a lot of clearance just by installing this extension piece so let's talk about the rear hd lift springs in here with the 14s let's see exactly where we at on height wise we're right around 21 and a half inches tall that's with no one on the golf cart now I'm here by myself. I don't have anyone here to jump on the back of the golf cart. How much do you guys think two people weigh or two kids away? A uh, couple hundred pounds. So in this test, what I'm thinking about doing here is placing six lead acid batteries on the back footrest here. Uh, six of these batteries weigh approximately 350 pounds. Uh, I think two kids that would generally fit back here would weigh, you know, 350, probably a lot less than 350 pounds. Um, and then we'll see if it goes down any. All right, boys, as you can see, we have the lead acid batteries on the back of the golf cart here. Let's check our measurement again. We're at 21 and one eighths of an inch. So we dropped three eighths of an inch by installing six lead acid batteries onto the back foot rest of the golf cart here. I don't think most kids will ever be 350 pounds. Maybe two grown kids will be, not sure. So let's make this right here a little bit more realistic. And uh, I weigh 260 pounds and I'm gonna get on the back of the golf cart as well. So 260 plus 350, you guys do the math. Uh, what's that, like 510, 610? I don't know. I'm gonna try to measure this thing here. Right now, looks like we're at 20 and a half inches tall. The tires is not rubbing at all. Got my fingers all the way through there. It's a little tight back here, but right in here, we're good. So. I can still get my fingers in here just fine. That's a lot of weight, especially on this one side here on the back of the golf cart. So that shows you the difference with the HD lift springs on the golf cart. Well, guys, what you think? I think the golf cart turned out amazing myself. Um, in this video, we were able to install the 14s with low profile tires. We put the wheelbase extension kit on the front of the golf cart so we don't have any rubbish on the front. On the back, we did some heavy duty leaf springs. We demonstrated it without weight and how tall it was with the 14s. And we did it with six batteries and myself. That was 610 pounds on the back. And the tires weren't anywhere close to the fender wells. I doubt any of you guys will be riding around with 610 pounds on the back of a golf cart. Maybe you will. And if so, on a lowered cart like right here, you don't have anything to worry about. If you ride on a lifted cart, you should be even better. I want to give a personal thank you to the guys over at golfcartstuff.com. They're willing to trust me on this right here, and I want to personally thank them for that. Go check out their website, wheels, tires, lift kits, extension kits, seat belts, seat covers. They got lithium batteries, AC conversion kits. They got the whole nine yards to make your golf cart custom at golfcartstuff.com. I'll place links in the description below where you can check them out and follow them on some of their social media pages as well. Well, with that being said, guys, the video is pretty much over. I'm going to head out. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Until next time, we'll see y'all later.